Dashboard design, that is what we're going to be focusing on today's video. So first, I'm gonna show you how to create a dashboard for this existing layout we've already been working on throughout this course. And then I'm gonna put you to the challenge by creating a dashboard for this layout that we've also been working on. So I'm excited to see what you come up with, try to work on these quick to get these with, you know, done within the next four to five hours. I'll take a look at some of them tomorrow and we will continue on. All right, let's get started. Alrighty, so here it is. Um, this is, again, what we've worked on already, a drum synth, you know, kind of like a fictional, kind of like a drum generator, VST, uh, for people to create drums. And so here is um, where we're gonna be working right here. Pretty much a blank slate, just keeping with the navigation. And here are the requirements. Create a sa sidebar navigation with four to five links. This is typical like in a dashboard. So we're gonna have a secondary navigation, not the one at the top, but one that's gonna be a vertical sidebar navigation. Include a date picker for stat selection, um, for a date selection essentially. And then also the first page that you show as a part of this mock-up, is number uh, it's going to be the orders so how many orders there are in associated stats so like show the number of orders the number of unique visitors the refund percentage and then a line chart of orders during the last 30 days i'll show you a really cool plugin that will generate charts for you okay so with that said let's go ahead and get started and put the page title on and then get the actual dashboard kind of like container generated as well so for this we're just gonna take this font right there and we're gonna put it right here and we're just gonna put in dashboard. Very simple. By the way, we are in lesson 13, dashboard design, right there. Okay, and once we have that, you know, we have some subjective uh, options here. We could just make this page all yellow. We could make it kind of end here and have like a stats thing on top of it. I'm just going to pull it all the way down for now and then maybe we'll experiment with different treatments thereafter. So what I want to do now is typically I would use a frame for this, but because I don't want to mess with auto layout right now because it slows me down, I'm just going to use a rectangle. So R on my keyboard and left click and drag out from the very left and right. Um, I think I hit T instead of R. Okay, that was the type tool. Left click, drag out, roughly right around there and we should be good now of course this color is but ugly um, this gray never mix mid grays like with colors um, it just looks so terrible so what we're gonna do is just make it white and give it a little bit of rounded corners like that okay now that we have that done we can create a little separation because we do have white on a very light color like a light yellow so if we want to have a little bit of separation we can add a drop shadow um, and how you choose to style that drop shadows up to you. It could be very minimal like this, or you can go in there and you can really start to tinker around with these settings right here. I'm gonna leave it like this. All right, so remember, we mentioned that we need a date selection. I think a good area to put a date selector, a date picker, is right here in this area, right at the top right. That's typically where they flow in most of these types of patterns. So I'm gonna hit R once again. And we're gonna drag this up here. I'm gonna reduce the amount of um, border radius, probably just to around 11, and we'll apply 11 here as well. And also make this white, and also come here. By the way, you can take all these, any of these properties, select it where it highlights it in blue, hit Control C, and then we can just grab this, hit Control V, and guess what? It pastes that in for us automatically, which is helpful. Okay, so for the date selection, um, I already have icons up here, if you notice. I'll get these positioned a little bit better. And I already chose one for like a calendar icon, which makes sense. So I'm just gonna drag, oops. I'm gonna drag this whole thing, sorry, right there. Notice the amount of white space that's around it. Notice the size, it fits perfectly. You know, you don't wanna put your icons too large. You don't want them to be too small. You want them just right, right, right around there. So it takes time to develop the eye for this sort of thing. Next up, I'm gonna hit the type tool and we're gonna, we're gonna say, um, we're gonna put an initial value here. Um, we're just gonna put last 30 days. Now, I'm not gonna use this type. We don't wanna overdo it too much with this type. So the secondary font that was used as a part of this layout is enter. So I'm just gonna revert back to enter. And we're gonna try something like size tw uh, 24. And we're gonna get this aligned up real nice. There we go. And then I'm gonna have a drop down icon as well, which we can use our Iconify plugin and just type in down 
and we could find a very simple down or we could use the pen tool if we aren't being all that lazy today. Okay, so that right there is a good date uh, selector. It's pretty good. I don't, maybe I'll make this a little bit smaller, but yeah, this here is pretty solid. I'm happy with it. Now we do have to worry about making sure that it is aligned properly. So I just grouped everything and we're gonna align it on the baseline there. All right, we're making progress. Now we have to worry about the other element. Um, we have to worry about the sidebar navigation with four to five links. So there's gonna be a lot of different ways we could attack, tackle this, but typically it's gonna be over here on the left for this sidebar navigation. So I'm gonna take this, duplicate it, Control D, drag it over, and I'm going to inset it a little bit, meaning I'm going to put it just a little bit away, a little bit of white space, but not a ton from the, uh, the existing one behind it. Then I'm gonna take the eyedropper tool and grab this background color, except push it up right around here, a color code, probably around F5, F3, E4, if you wanna put in that exact color code if you're following along, and then hide the, uh, or delete the, um, the drop shadow, we don't need it. Um, so right there's a good, like kind of like a sidebar container that we could utilize. So now what we can do is, um, I think we'll just grab this text, I'll drag it over here, and our first piece of type is just going to be orders. Now, by the way, you could use this font as well, and that's kind of what I originally used already. Um, let me make sure this is not a part of a group or a frame, there we go. And we're gonna make this um, maybe a little bit larger, like around 26 and bold, all right? So here's our orders link. And then underneath it, perhaps we can make this in like a, a medium. You know, this could be another page. This could be something like traffic. All right. Now what I'm gonna do is duplicate that, get an equal amount of white space while holding shift. Traffic, you know, what else would we have? We could have something like refunds. All right, we'll duplicate that. All right, outside of refunds, um, we can, let's just say students. Maybe there's an area to manage the students. Make sure these are all even, there we go. And then we'll do one more, maybe one that says um, something like hmm, messages. There we go. All right, so now we take all of these. I'm just gonna take these and hit auto layout. Um, and then we're gonna have a um, active page identifier. So we're just gonna hit O and just get a circle. And we could put this here, maybe we could put it here. It depends, um, whatever's up to you, what, what seems like it feels right. I think this is pretty good around here, just to let people know what page they're currently on. All right, so now we could probably make this even a little bit smaller, right around there. Okay, so that's a nice, simple, you know, not too crazy um, nav area. You can experiment with maybe pushing them out a little bit further or bringing them in. It's up to you as long as it's legible and you're minding all of your UI fundamentals. All right, so now we're gonna start designing the next part, which is the first page orders should feature the number of orders, the unique visitors, refund percentage, and a line chart. So let's do these three elements up here. These three elements, ask yourself, how much space is this going to take? The number of orders, okay? So think about it. So we just have to literally put a number and then maybe a label that says orders and maybe an icon. So uh, we could put these in probably, at least here on desktop, in three columns, one row to save space. So we could put them up top and then underneath we can put the chart. So for that, I'm gonna grab this icon right here. And we're gonna place it right there or around there or so, and we're gonna put in a fake order value. Let's just say like, I don't know, 68 orders. All right, and then we're gonna take this and make it bold, and we'll make it a bit larger. All right. All right, and then we'll replicate that down, and then we'll, in all caps, say orders, and make this a lot smaller. So it might come down, Maybe we'll make it uh, regular. Or you know what, we can make it bold, make it even smaller, and then increase the letter spacing just a bit. 
Do I like that? No, I don't. So sometimes I will experiment just on the fly <laughs> while I'm designing. I think I like this concept better, making it a regular font, uh, font weight, but we're gonna increase this just a bit and get rid of that extended letter spacing. All right, that's fine in my opinion, right around there. Again, um, I think I might go just a bit larger to try to kind of match the height of the icon to the left of it. Okay, so that looks pretty good right there. So now what we could do is just take this, replicate it, push it over here, and then we're gonna get this element. All right, and this is going to be something like 4 or 5.6K, whatever. Um, and then we're gonna put unique visitors. All right, so we're gonna get this one out and we're gonna put this one here. Now, if you're wondering where I got these icons from, they're just from Iconify. Another really good tip though about getting icons is you wanna make sure, and this is kind of difficult with Iconify, um, you wanna make sure you're get, grabbing, for the most part, icons that are styled very similar or from the same icon set. And so what you could do is you could do a search for um, or not, rather than doing search, just come up here to design resources, icons. You're gonna see a ton of different icon sets that you can just replicate in part of your Figma account and then just grab them and they're all gonna be designed very similarly. So definitely mine that. Um, we're gonna do one more here and very soon you're going to be tasked with designing your own. So we're gonna do something like 1.3% refunds uh, refund percentage or something like that or refunds and then finally we'll go ahead and oh no okay I messed these up these are supposed to be over here so what I'll do is um, delete this one this one should go here and then this one goes over here okay that's better. Okay, so there is our three different uh, sections right here. And there, everything is lined up pretty well. I could probably tidy things up just a little bit more, but that's pretty good as far as I'm concerned uh, for those three sections. There we go. So now what we're gonna do is generate a chart. So if you go over here and you type in um, plugins, you type in chart, you want this one right here. Now I've already used it, so you may have to install it. Um, and create chart, that's what we wanna click. Okay, so I'm gonna zoom up here. Number of lines, this is up to you. Number of points, I'm putting 30 for like 30 days. Um, and then we can uh, maybe trend this up. You'll see what the, all this stuff means. Style, um, I'm just gonna use black for this and you could do a preview. So it's gonna kinda show you what this looks like. This is what the chart will actually look like um, when we import it. So once we import this, we, we can always, always have to do is just create, click create. Maybe I could just do normal distribution. That looks kind of crazy. Mixed, trend down. <laughs> Maybe min value, we're we'll bringing up more like around 70. Yeah, so normal distribution, that'd be fine. Let's hit create. And then we just put it here, hold shift, increase the size, mind your alignment. And maybe we could push it down just a bit. Oopsie. And we'll put a label here. So for this label, let's just grab this here. We'll say uh, 30 day orders from the last 30 days or something like that. Now let's increase this, make it auto width. Now we need to make some adjustments here, give ourselves a little bit more room to work with. We're just about done. Push this down. I'm just gonna put orders here instead. All right, and something like that. And now it's your turn. We're gonna come back to the Laravel learning platform example, and here's where you are going to design. And then I want you to take a look at the um, requirements. They're very similar to what we just did, except we're working with a new design now, all right? So it's up to you in terms of how you wanna style this. 
So create a sidebar navigation with four to five links. Core statistics should be the first page, not orders like the other one. Um, include a date picture, uh, a date picture, a date picker for stat selection, just like we did before. Um, the first page, core statistics should feature these elements, just one more element than what we did before. The number of courses, number of students, the course completion percentage, and new students enrolled. So you have four different columns to worry about, and you might be able to put those in four different columns. It's up to you. Um, on a line chart of new students during the last 30 days. So try to make it feel cohesive as if it's a part of this design where you're utilizing existing colors. You don't have to use them all. You can make it monochromatic. It's up to you. I just want to see what you all do. As long as it looks good, I'm happy with it, even if it looks very similar to what I did. But, but again, try to make it cohesive and coherent. Um, don't overthink it. Don't overcomplicate things. So take a look at the description figure out how uh, to submit. It's very easy. They're in the description. Check out designcourse.com if you haven't yet. We're going to be wrapping it up with the 30-day UI UX series shortly, and hopefully you've been enjoying it. I'll see you all very soon.